The reason we are here is earlier to this year, we Water Aid commissioned the Mangrove and uh, Partners, a public policy research and institutional strengthening consultancy firm, to conduct a context analysis of urban sanitation in three cities in Nigeria, Enugu, Kano, and Wari, and to provide insights into the key barriers and opportunities in expanding inclusive sanitation access at the management of human waste across the sanitation value chain as a necessary first step towards addressing the sludge management, physical sludge management in Nigeria. The study specifically looked at institutional and legislative framework for managing sanitation in the cities, the current sanitation situation in each state, past and current interventions by different stakeholders, the existing business opportunities, and evaluation of existing opportunities for financing in the sanitation sector. We're very grateful to the managing partner and CEO of Mangrove and Partners, uh, Mr. Timain Uwejomo Bere, for a thorough study done in record time, despite the many challenges of the study. The study is part of WaterAid's commitment to supporting states and cities to utilize the window of the National Action Plan in improving access to safely managed and inclusive sanitation services. Nigeria today, more than ever before, is poised to make great and giant strides in addressing the sanitation challenges. The federal government has declared a state of emergency in the wash sector, the first ever in Africa, demonstrating political will at the highest level of government. An example that we hope that other states will emulate, as some have already begun to do, including Delta, Ekiti, Ondo, Jigawa, and Gombe states. The situation, as um, Stanley has shown, is dire, critical, and urgent. Poor sanitation is one of the glaring indicators of urban poverty, epidemics, and poor health, and is globally recognized as being at the root of dozens of fatal contagious diseases many of which are particularly prevalent among children. Yet in Nigeria, as we have heard, about 116 million people lack decent toilets. 110 million Nigerians lack hand washing facilities with soap, and about 40 million practice open defecation. The crisis in Nigeria's water sanitation and hygiene sectors extends to institutions also. 50% of all healthcare centers lack clean water. 88% lack basic sanitation, and 57% lack hand washing facilities with soap. And about 50% of all schools in Nigeria do not have basic water and sanitation facilities. Even worse, the brunt of the challenges of poor access is borne by people in the lowest economic quintile and in rural areas and small towns. This poor access has significant implications in education, health, and development outcomes. For instance, Nigeria loses 60,000 children under the age of five annually to diarrheal disease caused by poor sanitation. And, and water, of course. Poor water quality, the poor water supply and sanitation also cost the Nigerian economy. 1.3% of GDP, which is about 4.8 million annually. These losses are reflected in lost productivity due to wash-related diseases, time spent in traveling to um, access water and sanitation services, avoidable expenses by government and households to address the diseases caused by poor sanitation, and the lost human capital capacity in malnutrition and mortality. Nigeria is also experiencing rapid urban urbanization, which is putting further strain on an already inadequate watch infrastructure. But it is not all bad news. There are huge potentials for job and wealth creation in the sanitation value chain. If we can create the right policy framework and enabling environment for the robust participation of the private sector and civil society. This study, for instance, found that there are policies at national and state levels that are intended to address sanitation challenges but mostly combine water and sanitation to the degree that sanitation is largely overshadowed in terms of detailed targets and budgets. 
In many cases, the policies did not make provisions for fecal sludge management. Across the study cities, it was found that the content of sanitation-related state policies are generally not amenable to private sector participation and citizens' ownership, and the oversight functions in sanitation are fragmented across the MDAs. No agency was identified as having the mandate or operations covering all areas of the sanitation chain, and there was no recognized coordination platform to streamline all sanitation services, given the fact that all components of the sanitation value chain are intertwined. I will not reveal all the findings of the study. There is time enough for that. But I would like to assure you that the study is an, is an inspiration for change, as it provides enough recommendations. To provide a global perspective, we have also invited the World Bank, Water Aid Africa team members, as well as the CSO from Ghana to share experiences from elsewhere. I firmly believe that we can do this. We can end open defecation. We can improve water and sanitation access. We did it with smallpox, rinderpex, Ebola, and we are, and we are almost there with polio. But like but with like all these diseases, I have enumerated the Nigerian government cannot do it alone. They require political will at all levels. Continuous funding, systematic programming, partnerships and, co and collaboration um, between sector stakeholders to eradicate them. We, they require political will at all levels. So it's not just the federal government, but across the uh, state and local governments as well. We need the same. To be able to eradicate these diseases, a lot of um, cooperation across the states and with development partners was necessary. We need to do the same for the water and sanitation um, sector, to be able to address the sanitation crisis and to accelerate to 2030. I believe that we could do this if we are determined and we are focused. Thank you once again for sparing time to attend this workshop, and I look forward to a fruitful and insightful deliberation. This workshop has come at the right time, and uh, the Honorable Minister has not been able to be with us this morning because of the Federal Executive for Council that is going on, and he has sent his word that the outcome of this uh, study and the outcome of this workshop is very, very important to me. And that the ministry will do all possible, all, everything that is possible to at least make use of the outcome of this uh, study. And at the same time, try as much as possible to, to look at whatever that, the missing gap there and then uh, work towards uh, the success of the the, of the sector and at the same time the ministry is is doing a lot towards this uh, area and we have the main role of the ministry as it is uh, is to produce uh, policies workable policies that will push forward the problem that we have and provide a solution to those uh, problems and the ministry is trying its best in that area. We may continue to give figures, statistic data that this problem exists in Nigeria, but if we are not doing anything to at least solve the problem, the statistic data will be there, keep on increasing every day, but when we plan ahead to see what we can do to solve those problems, I think it will be better for, for us all. And it's a problem that all of us has to at least do our own quota so that those problems will not be there again. So on behalf of the Minister of the Environment, we at least associate with water aid and all other relevant, I mean, critical stakeholders. Thank you. The fact that I'm representing an engineer does not make me an engineer. Okay. I've been asked to present this address here, and as an obedient civil servant, I will do that exactly what I'm asked to do. 
the representative of the Honorable Minister of the Environment, the country director what I eat, representative of the World Bank and other members of the high table. We have other development partners that are here, UNICEF, JICA, and others that have not been introduced. Gentlemen of the press, distinguished participants, including my colleagues from the NTGS, as well as colleagues from the states. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to deliver these remarks on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria and indeed on my personal behalf. That is a genius man that I'm talking, not me. I want to use this opportunity to welcome all our international delegates from the United Kingdom, Ghana, Tanzania, Europe, and also uh, visiting delegates from Delta, Kanu, Enugu, Bauchi, Kaduna, and cross river states in Nigeria. We hope you have enjoyed warm hospitality from the nation's capital since you arrived. Today, I reiterate the commitment of the government of Nigeria to expanding access to clean water and improved sanitation for all. I am greatly honored to host this important event, which I believe is a pioneering attempt to support the new political prioritization of WASH by the current administration. This event is particularly timely as it follows the declaration of a state of emergency in Nigeria's water, sanitation, and hygiene, which we call WASH sector, and the launch of the National Action Plan to revitalize the sector by the federal government of Nigeria in 2018. It is a given that access to clean water and improved sanitation is essential for better health outcomes of individuals and for the socio-economic development of nations. Goal 6 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, is focused on ensuring inclusive and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water, sanitation and hygiene for all and ending opentification. However, it is unfortunate to state here that Nigeria has not performed so well on the targets and basic indicators. According to recently released JMP results, about 55 million Nigerians do not have access to clean water supply services. 110 million Nigerians do not have basic sanitation and 57% lack hand washing facilities with soap and about 47 million people practice open defecation. Why this because are uh, an improvement for Nigeria Compared to the figures captured in 2015, it is an indicator that we have a long way to go to meet the SDGs targets on sanitation and hygiene 
by 2030, especially. Nigeria as a country is expressing rapid urbanization with a rapidly growing population at the current growth rate of 2.8% to 3% per year. Nigeria's urban population is expected to double in the next decade. Quite unfortunately, urbanization in Nigeria is mainly demographically driven without commensurate socioeconomic dividends and benefit of the urban environment. This, among other things, has created urban water, urban health crisis of inadequate, safe water supply, poor sanitation, and solid waste management. These findings from the Washington survey attest to this, as only 20% of Nigerians living in urban areas have access to basic wash services. This crisis does not only impact the achievement of SDG 6, explicit links can be made between the target of SDG 6, clean water and sanitation for all, and other goals, ensuring that all men and women in particular, the poor and the vulnerable, have equal rights to economic resources as well as to basic services, that is SDG 1, substantial reduction in the number of deaths and illnesses from water and soil pollution, SDG 3, improvement in water infrastructure, SDG 9, sustainable and equitable urban development, SDG 11, efficient water resources management, SDG 12, and sustainable reduction of marine pollution, SDG 14. I'm an assistant director and epidemiologist in the Department of Public Health, here representing the Honorable Minister, Dr. Osagi Ehanure. He has uh, sent his good message I'm only going to read what he has asked me to read. I read. I am delighted to be in your midst on this memorable occasion during which a national dissemination workshop on contextual analysis of urban sanitation and the fecal sludge management in Nigeria will be discussed. I must uh, congratulate you for these noble and wonderful initiatives. It is true that sanitation in Nigeria has mostly focused on supplying and encouraging toilet uptake for increased sanitation coverage. However, there is urgent need to address other parts of the sanitation value chain, and these are urban sanitation and fecal sludge management. With more, than half of, with more than half of women choosing to live in the cities, the proper management of human ecrystra, including its safe and clean confinement, treatment, and disposal are associated, and disposal and the associated health-related practices becomes critical in improving the quality of life in cities. Of particular importance is the understand sustainable sanitation within the larger perspectives of urban environmental management, including integrated waste management, safe, clean, clean water management, air quality management, etc. Fecal sludge management is the collection, transport, and treatment of fecal sludge from pit latrine, septic tanks, and other 
on-site sanitation system. Fecas Lodge is um, a mixture of human ecrystal, water, and solid waste, e.g. toilet papers or other anal cleansing materials, menstrual hygiene materials that are disposed in pits, tanks, and forts of on-site sanitation system. Fecas Lodge management is necessary in densely populated areas where a proportion of the population is not connected to a sewerage network. And uh, the covering and the rebuilding of pit latrines is not possible. This is the case in most urban areas in developing countries like Nigeria. But such services are also used in developed countries where sewerage systems are unavailable. Ficus Lodge management services are usually provided by former and informal private sector services provider, local governments, water authorities, and utility. However, in many developing countries, Ficus Lodge management services are often unavailable, or if they are available, are often informal, unregulated, unhygienic, and unsafe. This can lead to surface water and groundwater pollution, the spread of pathogenic organisms into the environment, and adverse public health impacts. Goals of the Sustainable Development Goal calls for ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. You can all uh, agree with me that sanitation rarely receives the required attention and priority despite its key importance to many other sectors. World Health Organization attributes 80% of all diseases and 25% of all deaths in developing countries to polluted water. So reducing, treating, and reusing waste water provides an alternative source of water in times of increasing water scarcity and promotes human and ecosystem health. This supports sustainable development goal uh, 6.3 on improving water quality and treating and reusing uh, waste water. Decisive and urgent and large-scale action is therefore needed to increase wastewater and thicker sludge uh, treatment, reuse, and recycling. Cities should be empowered to take the lead on a resource uh, revolution with governments and the private sector investing heavily in the infrastructure to enable a transaction, transition to a circular economy. This will bring significant environmental, economic, and social benefits. Infrastructure needs should include a portfolio of solutions that consider centralized and decentralized, natural and built wet and dry options. I therefore want to believe that the findings of this laudable research conducted, which will be shared with all stakeholders present here today, will open up a lot of opportunities in this regard. Finally, I want to plead with the principal stakeholders in the Nigerian water sector, particularly Federal Minister of Water Resources, to intensify efforts in water sanitation. And the Federal Minister of Environment should do the same in environmental sanitation. Why my humble Ministry of Health we do our own part in ensuring good hygiene for all Nigeria.
Thank you for your attention. Particularly the new development board that has responsibility for that for the metropolitan area in the absence of the local government to get this to work with them to bring back or bring into practice or into use the 50 percent that is currently uh, not being used so that the whole city can give this service the another challenge is that the, the their fees are quite high i'm sure those fees will can come down if there's more waste coming in and more volume of uh, business that is coming to them um the second recommendation we are making is on participation we felt we've had a sense of nonchalance from the citizens of worry uh, perhaps it's because of poverty because the level of poverty we found in worry is worse than we found in Kano and Enugu and yet is the oil producing city the second oil producing city in Nigeria the level of poverty is worse uh, so it's maybe because of poverty the facilities are poor we encourage we are recommending that uh, the foundation for uh, partnership initiative in Niger Delta uh, paint they are operating in worry we are recommending that they help to build a, a pool of civil society groups in worry that are able to hold government ac to account and help to uh, increase awareness and participation of citizens in the city on, on hygiene and sanitation issues uh, like i did mention before the fiscal sludge situation is bad in worry the delta state waste management board is responsible for that uh, we want to encourage the board um, to lead in the provision of um, the, the and the management of services, including providing um, uh, the treatment facilities or sites where necessary. The dump site that is being used in Worry at the moment or was being used when we conducted the study. When we went back, not quite one month after, uh, on the uh, for the uh, dissemination, the validation workshop, we were told that that dump site had been closed. So effectively, the city does not have a dump site today. Where people are dumping waste, of course, we know that waste will be produced, and the waste will be trucked out, and it will be dumped somewhere. Whether we like it or not, it will happen. So it's just like being an ostrich, enclosing the dump site and not providing an alternative. Um, lastly, we also think that the new board should help the city uh, to set up a, a metropolitan sanitation, uh, integrated sanitation plan. So now let's go to policy issues. We have, uh, we've identified six policy issues that we think that are top issues that should be addressed. We start, however, from looking at what the National Action Plan has recommended. The National Action Plan has recommended uh, that the federal government should set up a policy and that um, should support states to demonstrate citywide approaches to sanitation delivery. These are very good recommendations. We want to encourage those. The states are supposed to help to ensure that uh, the water agencies have uh, sanitation responsibility for urban san and semi-urban areas and rural do rural sanitation to design modular effluent treatment to encourage private sector uh, to build sludge treatment and, and, and things like that. Um, I think we encourage this, but we provided six recommendations. The first one challenges one of the recommendations in the National Action Plan. Our findings, and that is why we encourage Water in to make sure that the two ministers, Water Resources and Environment, are seated here today. And we are grateful that they are here. The first thing we found is that the responsibility for sanitation in the states rests with the Environment Ministry. But we in the water sector mainly focuses on uh, water sanitation, which is the flood, uh, fecal sludge that we are talking about. And we've, over the years, I've been in the sector for a bit, had this tension. I know that the current ministers are working together, but the current Ministry of Environment, uh, sorry, uh, Water Resources, they've put up a collaborative council of ministers that have all the key ministers that meet regularly, which is a good way to go. 